Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game 10. This was sent to me by AEG and is designed by Molly Johnson, Sean Stankiewicz, and Robert Melvin. 10 is an exciting push your luck and auction game for the whole family. Players take turns drawing cards, but must be careful not to exceed a total of 10 or they bust. Wild cards are helpful to complete number sequences and are immediately auctioned when they are drawn. Collect the longest runs in each color to win. Let me show you how to play. In 10, uh, the object of the game is you are trying to complete runs of cards in sequential numeric order. You'll score one uh, point for each card in their longest sequence within each color at the end of the game. If you get a, a set of one through nine, you get 10 points for that color, most points wins. Now, at the start of the game, each player gets five currency tokens. There are three card types in the game. Number cards uh, have white numbers on them. They're one to nine, and there are four colors, blue, green, orange, and pink. These are the ways you can complete your sequences. Uh, there are more copies of lower cards than there are higher value cards. Higher value cards are rarer. Wild cards have black numbers on them, and or they can feature the, the any number symbol. Uh, when you draw one of these, uh, you immediately pause your draw phase and do an auction phase. These can be used as any of the four colors. So this is a three of any color. Um, currency cards have a value of one to five black currency tokens on them. These will give you currency to spend during auctions uh, or buying cards in the market. During your turn, you always do what is called the card draw phase, uh, which may be interrupted by the auction phase uh, if a wild card is revealed. What you do is you draw cards from the top of the deck one at a time. If it's a number card, you place it face up to join or form a tableau. Uh, if it's a wild card, let's say I drew the next card, it's a wild card, you immediately do an auction, uh, which I'll explain in a second. After drawing each card, you must choose to either stop and take a reward or continue to draw another card. Your turn ends either when you stop or bust. So let's say I draw another, I'm gonna go, mm, I'll draw another card. Oop, well that's a bust. So let's go into busting. Each numbered card you reveal adds to your tableau. Uh, each currency card you reveal subtracts from your total. So if I had drawn this instead, it'd be five minus two. And so my total would be three. If you ever have a net, a net positive total value of more than 10, like this, in this case 12, you bust. Or if you have currency cards with total value of more than 10, even though these are negative numbers for the net value, uh, for example, let me show you. Here's a possible term. You draw this card first, it's negative two. Then you draw this card, so it becomes three. Add this, this becomes 10. Uh, this becomes six, because of minus four. This becomes uh, three, because of minus three. Uh, but let's say I draw this card. Now, even though the total net value is zero, um, because of all the negative numbers. Um, however, the total value of the currency cards uh, is now 12. And that means you also bust. You can either bust from the numbers, or I'm sorry, the net value being more than 10, or these adding up to more than 10. If you bust, first you move all the number cards to the side of the play area to make a market. So over here, we have like the market where players can buy cards. You then gain one bus token, which is worth three currency from the supply. You only resolve this step if you bust with number cards with a net positive value of more than 10. If you bust with currency cards, uh, then uh, these, like, like in this turn, all the other players uh, will receive currency equal to how many are on here. Now, the total amount of currency you can have is 10. Um, but in this case, everyone else's currency limits would uh, fill up. Um, if you bust just by net value, you don't do this step. Let's say I just draw this. This goes negative four, four, six, back to two, five. So my total net value is five. And let's say I choose to stop. Now, your option here is you could either take all the number cards here and put them in front of you, or take all the currency cards and get that much currency. If you choose to take the number cards, you take these and you put them in front of you. And so you're starting to make your set. Everybody else gets this many currency tokens that are left, in this case, eight. Then you discard those. Then 
You may take a buy phase if you would like. So you're gonna go look over here and go, okay. Currently I've got five plus a bus token, so eight. Uh, all the cards are worth uh, what their value are. So if I wanna buy this seven card, you spend seven currency and you can add it to your uh, tableau in front of you. If I chose instead to take the currency cards instead of the number cards, you get the number of currency tokens on the cards and all the number cards here go to the market. And then if you do that, you don't get to do a buy phase. Buy phases, you can only buy one card from the market per turn. Uh, you may also uh, spend cards that, are, that you have uh, to get more currency. So let's say I wanted to buy this five in the market and I did a successful turn, I have four. I could discard one of my cards. Each card gives you one more currency. And then, like I said, these bust tokens you get when you bust, these are worth three currency and they don't count towards your currency limit. Sometimes as you're drawing cards, so here's negative one, negative six, negative five, negative four. And then let's say I draw a wild card. Whenever you draw a wild card, you stop and you do an auction. Starting with the player to the left of the active player, each player may bid an amount of currency they're willing to pay for the card. So maybe player one or the next player is like, I'll bid. Two, I'll bid four, says the next person. You can either bid more or pass. Each player has only one opportunity to bid or pass. Um, after that, the player who bid the most was pay that currency and they get this wild card in front of them. And like I mentioned before, you can also discard cards from your display for one currency each if you need them for auctioning. Now, once you go through the entire deck, then uh, you start to score. So. How you score is you look at all of your runs for each color. So if at the end of the game I just had three orange cards, that's, uh, and, and they're all together, that's three points. Even if I have an eight here, that doesn't do anything because I'm missing the cards in between. Wild cards can be used to fill in gaps. So if I have one, two, wild, three, four, five, six, like this, uh, then I can score six points for that. And as I mentioned before, if you complete a whole nine, even with wilds, that's a complete set bonus. So you get to plus an extra point, which is 10 points. And you just add them up for each color. Uh, add up your longest run for each, you get points for each. Add them up, whoever has the highest score is the winner. If there's a tie, the most remaining currency breaks the tie. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You're just drawing cards, uh, trying not to bust. There are two ways to bust. And once you think you've gone far enough, you can either take the cards, put them in your tableau, or take the currency in order to buy cards with the market uh, or win wild cards from auction. And that's pretty much the game. So I enjoy push your luck games where you can bust, and this one's pretty decent. Uh, I do think the whole currency cards are negative, numbers are positive is a little too fiddly. Uh, like I'm very quick with like math, so it wasn't a problem, but I could find it being very annoying for people who aren't necessarily fast at adding negative and positive numbers together. There are definitely players I played with that were like, what, I, have, I can't do this. I was like, I'll just do it for you, but it's a little fiddly. Even the reference card the game comes with has, there's like a few, too many exceptions to the rule. Like, you know, you can buy a card after your reward, but uh, the guy, you can't do it if you do take the currency cards instead of the number cards. It doesn't state that on the reference card, so even that's not fully like clear. There's just a little too many, like, if you you can do this unless you do this and make sure you do this and you bust this way, it's total net value for positive numbers, but adding the cards for the negative values, it's 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 a little clunky. With that said, once you play the game for a couple of turns, it's, it's really easy to understand. Um, it can just be a little overwhelming for people because there's so many exceptions. A lot of the game, though, can really just be summed up as luck of the draw. Like, if you keep drawing cards you already have, uh, that's the thing where, um, you know, they're useless to you if you draw cards that you don't need or just keep drawing overwhelmingly high cards. There's not a lot you can do about it. You know, you pull two cards, they're both high cards, you bust, mm, great, too bad. Overall, while I think the game itself is all right, uh, there's nothing about it that makes it stand out above other push your luck games for me. It kind of lacks real personality and it doesn't help that the components also feel kind of cheap. The cards are like not good quality, the tokens are very blah. Like, at the end of a game of 10, I just kind of felt like, yeah, no, that was fine. Not super excited. 
Uh, the most excitement you get out of this is watching people push their luck and bust and laughing at them. But there are better options out there. Even though this game itself is fine and I don't dislike it, I think it's okay, it feels a little generic, uh, it's a little clunky, and it doesn't sort of assert itself as this is worth playing over other push-your-luck games.